Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for February 14th. Thank you everybody that sent in a lot of different articles this week, but first I'm going to start with one that I found out myself. I've talked to you about TrueCrypt before, about using it to create encrypted containers before you upload anything to the uh, World Wide Web or put anything in any kind of a storage place. I mean, even even on your own computer, I would suggest if you've got financial records, anything you want to keep totally private, that you would use TrueCrypt. And as I said before, TrueCrypt is basically, even though they've stopped developing it, there's no real security flaws that I've seen that I'm concerned with. But just in case, there's a company called uh, IDRIX that has taken up the fork for VeraCrypt. They're still keeping it because it started open source. They're keeping it open source because that's the license. So if they want to do a fork, they have to do it that way. But um, the one thing that people didn't like when VeraCrypt first came up was it was not totally compatible with the old TrueCrypt volumes, but now as of the latest update, you can use VeraCrypt and open up your TrueCrypt volumes before you had to open them up under TrueCrypt and then re-encrypt them using VeraCrypt. But um, also a few different features too if you're used to using TrueCrypt, VeraCrypt actually added a few um, little minor useful features here and there that just makes it slightly easier to use. Now this is something that you need to pretty much be computer savvy to use in the first place, otherwise you probably need somebody to kind of help you use it. It's not um, hold you by the hand, choose menus and stuff like that. But if you're used to using programs similar to uh, um, most of your standard encryption programs, I, I don't think this one would be difficult at all. And I will put a link in below down in the description to show you where to download it. Um, just like TrueCrypt, you can either install it or it can be a standalone program. You can just take the .exe file, put it on a thumb drive, and take it with you and encrypt anything you want. Next up, this was sent in by three different people, um, so there's got to be a lot of interest in this. My friend Dylan, um, Tony F., and Catherine posted this on the Dumpster Divers page, which... Uh, on Facebook, which I would encourage you to, if you're not a member and you don't even, or if you don't even need to join the page actually and be a member, I'll just put a link to the Facebook page for the Dumpster Divers, and you can uh, put it in your favorites and go check it out. You don't even need to be a member of Facebook for that matter. You can just click on the link and go see our Facebook Dumpster Diver site to see what people post. And there's been a lot of interesting things these last uh, couple of weeks have been great, but. Um, this is, uh, let me get it up here, this is, Spot is Boston Dynamics Nimble New Quadruped Robot. Before I think I featured Big Dog, it's kind of like a, a pack mule type of uh, robot on four legs that can carry stuff at a slow speed through the, the woods and up and down hills and stuff for um, military use and carry quite a bit of weight. This one's a little bit smaller and more nimble and evidently according to the video here, I'll put some of the video on, uh, they have two of these things now. They can... Uh, they are kind of like a large dog. They can go at a pretty decent pace. Their their normal gait is a, a standard walk, but they can go up to a slow jog. They can go up uh, hills, uh, navigate through forests. Uh, they even show one where a guy tries to kick it over in a parking lot and puts quite a bit of force against it, and this thing self-stabilizes it. So it has a complete dynamic stabilization, which you need for something like that. I could see... Now, they, they speculated in this article what are they actually going to use this for, and they had some ideas here like an urban delivery robot, but I don't see that. I would see it more like for uh, either tracking a criminal that's hiding in the forest or maybe a, somebody lost in the wilderness, something like that, or not necessarily even in a forest in a desert area. You could set up like five or six of these robots to just fan out and look at the person, and uh, they never get tired. Basically, you just swap out the batteries or whatever every so often or Maybe in the future you could even make them so they could do that on their own. Just go to a battery station and, and do a swap out and just keep looking and looking until you find someone. That's at least my idea. So anyway, if you get a chance, check that out. And uh, next one, this is from Navy Thomas too. U.S. Na Navy's railgun will be shown in public in February 2015. Now I've seen some videos, so I'm guessing they've uh, already showed it as of now. And it uh, goes up to Mach 6. It's going to um, have a... The projectile itself is 28 pounds, and uh, because of the fact that it uses no explosives whatsoever, it's just kinetic energy uh, produced by electric uh, propulsion, uh, the ships ha have to store less powder, no explosive charge, it's just kinetic energy when it hits the target, so should it miss the target or still stay intact after it hits the target and then land somewhere, there's no danger to the public from a uh, unexploded ordnance or anything like that, so it's kind of like a win-win-win, and... Uh, yeah, actually, the public gets a demonstration of it, but I'll uh, show some of the video here and 
just I think it's great. The technology is going to make things a, a lot safer for the ships and stuff like that. If you get a, a ship that's hit or caught on, gets caught on fire or something like that, no powder to blow up. So much safer. Well, also, the rate of fire is uh, every six seconds they can fire one of these projectiles out. They say they may link it up with some conventional weapons and be able to fire um, these things uh, even twice as fast as that. And being this is the first generation, I mean, it's kind of like with the... Uh, spot robot too i mean they have the first generation and then you have the second generation where you have a lot of improvements so uh, there's two different links that do uh, pretty good about this article so i'll put both of them up although i will have to say the talking part on the uh, fox news site when you go to that one just skip the video part and just do the reading the video i didn't really get a lot out of it except for the little bit where they showed the projectile in action and last thought, this one's from Navy Thomas, too. The Hubble Space Telescope could survive through 2020. Evidently, the repair mission that they did in 2009 turned out so well that the uh, replacement parts are going to last longer than they even expected. So um, this is good because, if you know, I've talked about it before, the James Webb Telescope is going to be going up uh, fairly soon, and uh, there will be a little bit of overlap time where both telescopes can be used simultaneously. The James Webb Telescope operates uh, not so much into the optical range as ranges outside of uh, regular vision and stuff like that. So it you know, does the infrared and the ultraviolet spectrum a lot more than the uh, Hubble does. So if they can use the Hubble in conjunction with it and take pictures in both spectrums of light, that will be a big help. Now, it's not the end of the world if the Hubble doesn't last all the way to 2020 or even after 2020 because if you've seen technology, they actually have ground-based telescopes now that can take just as clear of pictures as the Hubble. So it's not the greatest loss in the world, but still, you've got limited amount of telescopes that are that powerful and that clear and limited time to use them. So I think keeping as much equipment as you can up and running is always a good thing. So anyway, thank you for continuing to send stuff in. I even have a few things in my uh, back archives that people have sent for use in um, future shows, but don't hesitate to send even more and check out all the links below. So take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.